You're listening to Intermission on 91X. Today's guest is Joe Callahan. into the room There was a stillness in the air An electrifying gloom Dealing in each and every hand I like that song a lot because it speaks to a lot of things that I hold as uh, as important. You know, like it's it was after I'd listened to an interview with Sarah McLaughlin about how sh- she was having trouble with a, her management and and a co writer and all that kind of stuff, and they had to go into court to sort us all out. And, and uh, it was about you know you're under oath, and of course as a journalist and I think as a human being. You come to a point in your life where you go, you know what, I want to live my life under oath. I, I'm done with, I don't want to lie. I don't like people who lie. I want to live my life under oath. And so that's kind of what that song was about. And it was also sort of tied in with the time when my mother was passing away at the same time because she was uh, fearful. The look in her eyes was fearful. It was like, oh boy, you know, the gig is up. You know, and and so there was a whole bunch of stuff that gets kind of woven together in that song. But uh, I, I like that song. That's w- one of my favorites from the CD. Blue light and candle night and blinded sight, but only for an hour. Her eyes and then my eyes and then horizon. Stretch out to the power Stretch out to the power Stretch out to the power Well, you know, it was it was spoke to a special moment uh, in a special relationship uh, at the time, and it did. It did that. It just uh, whatever, whatever that sort of chemistry that occurred at that moment uh, allowed love its way, and uh, that sentiment is what I'm hoping to bring to that to that song. Uh, just the notion that uh, uh, certain things happen. There's an alignment. There's a confluence of events. There's a coincidence. I don't think there's any coincidence really anymore, but. Uh, and if that happens and you're with the right person, it can allow love its way. You've been married for to the same woman for quite some time. Yeah, about uh, 30, 30 some odd years, Nancy and I've been together, something like Don't that. Don't worry, uh, young man, it'll get better. Uh, <laughs> yes, right. Keep working at it. <laughs> yeah, you'll be fine. <laughs> How does Nancy feel about these songs? Are they about her or is it someone else? Well, you know, they're certainly about, certainly about her uh, and, and uh, certainly allow love its way I was. Um, but you know, it's interesting that you asked that kind of question because this song that I wrote for my daughter on her 16th birthday is on that album as well. And I did, I wrote the, I wrote the song, Nancy and I wrote the song together actually. Uh, and, uh, what it's called, uh, vision of an angel. Uh, but it starts off with what we wish for you. And, uh, and it was just uh, myself and guitar, right? It was just uh, what we wish for you. And it was, a, it was meant to be a gift to our daughter when she turned 16. And uh, I, did a, I did a take of it at Tim's studio uh, and got a good take. We ran through it one night, maybe just three, four times, but we got a really good take. So it was an old recording. I said to Tim, I want to include that on the album. But I felt that it was need, necessary to ask Allison. You know, I said, Allison. I said, because Allison, she finds it hard to listen to it, you know, because it, it becomes a, an emotional experience for her. But 
Uh, and so, but I said, Ellie, I said, I want to, I'd like to put this on the album, I, you know, and she goes, well, yeah, like, what are you asking me about it for? And I said, well, you know, the song was essentially written for you. So, you know, I, I, I don't, I wouldn't want to put it on there if you didn't feel good about it. And she says, no, no, of course, no, no, that's fine. What we wish for you is the stuff that dreams are made of. What we wish for you isn't all that easy to find. What we wish for you, it's not impossible to imagine. Cause what we wish for you is divine. What we hope for you is that others know what you're made of. What we hope for you is that you find your place among the few. What we hope for you is that others will allow your freedom. What we You know, when you write stuff, it's like, it's funny, uh, one of my many conversations probably with Tim, it's like when you put a, you put a CD out there, it's so, okay, now people are really going to know what I really think. <laughs> you know? So it, it is, you know, it is that. It is kind of an opening up, which actually, again, you know, we talk about performance, uh, music performance, and I, I really, and this, I, I had a long, you know, again, starting as a young kid, you know, sort of going, oh, what is this, you know? wow, all these people, he's like, oh, you know, they're responding as, oh, you know, they're all excited. And you go, wow, oh, what does that mean? And it takes you a while to sort of sort it out. And I never really liked uh, the, I never liked the idea of the limelight, right? That's not really something that's comfortable for me, although I'm comfortable in it when I do it. If I'm p- playing a role or something, I'm hosting or performing, and there's a role that goes along with it. But there's a certain degree of discomfort with it. And so, one of the times I was at a conference and the Mohawk dancers were there and dancers, singers and dancers from uh, Tainanega. And um, the guy stood up with the dance, all the dancers and the singers, and he said, we're, and there's a room full of 150 people, and he said, we're not performing for you tonight. And then a kind of a hush fell over the room. Went, oh my God, what have we done? We've offended them or something, something's wrong. And he let that hang out there for a while, right? This is a pregnant pause. and. And then he said, what we're doing is we're sharing with you tonight. You know, he says, we're sharing a part of our culture. So for me, that's what, that's what the music is. is. And I, I, when I see it, I recognize it. You know, the re- I call it the real deal. It's called, lots of people call it the real deal, you know. And I love looking for that. I love it when people bring that to their per, their performance it's a sharing it's just an opening up of i was at uh, my family's uh, place we have a, a sort of a christmas tradition where everybody gets together it's you know grandparents and children and children's children and children you know, like you got 60 70 people little kids and and invariably the guitars come out right and there was two girls who sang this year uh, who were sort of, you know, cousins, and etc. Never heard them sing before. And there was such an authenticity in their voices, right? And I thought, you know, that's, this is what it's about. This is what music is for me. So that's what I like to bring to musical experiences. You know, if you take part in a night kitchen too, I'm hoping you feel as comfortable as sitting in front of, that's why Porch Fest is great, because you're, you're in with, you're, you're sharing some time with some people in their homes, you know. Well, I'm not sure how I want to think about who's on our welfare rules. And I'm not sure how I want to think about politicians and polls. Oh, I'm not sure how I want to go about this country's source of pain. But I can tell you that I'm thinking about the sun, the wind, the rain. Oh, I'm not sure how I want to think about our natives' unfair pain. 
fight And I'm not sure I want to think about Yet another farcical freedom fight Oh, I'm not sure how I want to think about The way we tend to treat our fate But I can tell you that I'm questioning The way we love Um, you know, it's a, it's a kind of a call to arms, you know, uh, it's, uh, you know, let's, you know, it's kind of like, uh, and, and also respecting what's important in life, you know, the things that, that, uh, um, you know, we just, we need to be thinking about what's going on. We need to take action when we have the opportunity to take action and to act on our convictions. And so that song I think is, you know, uh, why don't we just, you know, blah, 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 without getting into the lyrics, you know, it's like, why don't we do this? You know, there's no good reason not to. So, um, so yeah, that's a bit of a call to arms. Yeah. In matters of the heart, I'll pay my dues. Might not seem like much to you. But now I'm lucky in love Yes, I'm lucky in love I'm drifting in the updraft Of an explosive that needs no fuse In matters of the head I've done me some Oh, I have to admit, you know, that it's not all that much fun Unless you're lucky in love on the bus to Ottawa I was going down I think to see my daughter and uh, yeah it was just uh, <clears throat> yeah I just feel pretty lucky in love you know and uh, it's an upbeat kind of thing you know uh, kind of an upbeat blues shuffle and uh, yeah I do I feel lucky in love I feel like I've been very blessed uh, in the relationships that I've had you know certainly with you know my family my wife and my children and and in general, you know, I feel lucky, uh, you know, fortunate, you know, again, going back to Fred Ryan, he says no such thing as luck, you know, he says you make your fortune, you know, uh, you make your good fortune or whatever. And I, and I think there, there's truth in that, but I really do feel, so that's kind of an expression of, uh, you know, I somewhat of gratitude, but really just kind of a recognition that, you know, you got to have good luck in this, in this world or, and if, and if you are lucky in love, you know, everything else is like a really distant second. You know, it really is. When was the last time that you let your enemy be your friend? When was the last time That you made an honest effort to make amends Don't you think it's time you challenge your freedom with responsibility so that's that's sort of uh, a little more aggressively saying you know so when was the last time that you da 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 you know so that's kind of an angry uh, it's a little bit of an angry tune that one so uh, you know it's kind of the flip side of uh, not sure you know uh, you know it's but it's points to the same thing you know when was the last time that your elected representative actually represented you you know questions like that and they were really it, I, I kind of that song sometimes I sort of go you know really I'm not trying to preach to anybody these are really questions that I was asking myself uh, you know and so I just thought okay these are questions that w- people should be asking themselves I hear your anger in the wind I feel 
feel your tenderness in the breeze I feel your warmth in the sun I feel your strength in the trees I feel your laughter in my heart I feel your weakness in my knees But you are gone Now I'm trapped by memories I know that you have walked the line Floated like a butterfly had to be I know that Jesus was your man Earned your undying loyalty And like a stallion on a hill I see your spirit breaking free But you are gone Now I'm locked in memory well, that was a song about my brother, yeah. Uh, my brother, Tom, who was my best friend. Um, he, uh, yeah, he passed away of cancer. It would have been, actually, I guess, about uh, six years ago now, yeah. Tom was a farmer. He carried on with the family farm. Uh, big guy, he was, you know, built like a fridge and... Uh, and a heart to match it, and uh, he we played in the band together. And he and I, were, he was one of my best friends, and so it was a very. Uh, I wrote that song basically for, essentially for uh, the family. It was kind of like after he died, it was like, wow, you know, like everywhere, everywhere, he's everywhere, you know. And so it kind of starts off. I hear your anger in the wind. I feel your tenderness in the breeze, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and, and it was about this thing of, of being captivated by memories. And, uh, at the start it was like, you know, wow, this is, this is a downer, you know, this is not, you know, all I've got is memories. But, but then at the end of the song, it kind of does a little bit of a turn and it's like, yeah, you know what, we're, we're not trapped by these memories. We're freed by them because we had that experience and we, we got to know this guy and we, we got to spend some time with him. And, um, he, uh, he had three, I always like to tell a story if I, if I sing that song, it's a difficult song. I don't usually sing it, but, um, uh, but if I do, I introduce it in this way. I always say, you know, he had three heroes, uh, in, in his life. He had, uh, it was Muhammad Ali, uh, uh, Jesus Christ. And, uh, who's the third one? It's Johnny Cash. So, and so I make a nod lyrically to all three of those in the, in the song, right? So, uh, just to sort of recognize him. And he was a big horseman. He, he loved horses. He, he raised Arabians, which are very spirited horses. And, and, uh, so they were the love of, you know, aside from his family, the love of his life. And so, you know, stallion on the hill was one of the sort of part of the imagery of, of him as well. So, so yeah, that song's, uh, it's about Tom. Yeah. Tom, Tom, uh, got to shake Johnny Cash's hand. That was quite, uh, it was a, quite a, an important uh, moment for him. Uh, he played at uh, Kingston at one time. So Tom made a point of going out to the bus afterwards and he was just standing out there. So he walked up to him and he says, well, John, I just want to shake your hand. <laughs> and, and he says, well, all right. <laughs> Johnny Cash does a really good Tom Callahan. Uh, and, <laughs> Tom used to sing Johnny Cash songs in the band. So it was, it was quite good. Yeah. Kathy was getting rice I said to myself that it would be very nice If I could maybe have a place to play Or a place for my musical spirits to roam While we were standing in the doorway They said maybe once in a while You could call this place your home So I, I talked it over with Timothy He said it seemed all right He said, you know, we could maybe boogie every other Friday night He said, as far as I can tell We've got very little to lose That's why we're serving it up for you now Welcome to our Banquet of the Blues 
That's just a fun song. Uh, you know, again, based on the journalism, though, I mean, it starts off with uh, just uh, kind of a... Uh, I was walking home from uh, uh, work, and I stopped in at uh, the Connor House, which was on uh, Pinnacle Street at the time. And Kathy Finley was there, and, and uh, I said, you know, we need some, some, whatever it is we need, you know, uh, rice or something. And uh, the Connor House, as it turned out, used to be owned by people who, who played piano and, and uh, gave music lessons. Connor Sisters, I think it was. And I said, oh, no kidding. I said, well, wow. I said, this might be a good place to do some music sometimes she goes yeah like we really would like to get some live music going on in here and we're trying to find a way to make it work we've got a little some tables upstairs and whatnot so anyway the whole thing is you know, this conversation about you know playing music and uh and it, it ended up i was i originally was going to call it connor house blues but i thought you know it was just a little bit too uh too narrow focused but uh but yeah that was about started on a conversation with kathy finley at connor house blues and it's just a fun song and we we just enjoy playing that song you know, is uh you know pete snell does a an amazing uh, sax thing and and mark uh, bishop uh you know uh, the bass line is is very uh, important and it's kind of fun. It's just a fun blues tune, yeah. A Patterson Street, the place you can meet. Person you wanted to know. At that Patterson place, you alone have to face the emptiness filling your soul. At Patterson Street. Window seat was a trinity you could be home. Yeah, so that's about a time when I lived on that. Yeah, there was uh, there was some people. That song's been around a long time. I ran into a guy who said, "Wow, it took you twenty years to record that friggin' song. What's wrong with you?" Yeah, that was about a, uh, about a time I spent there. And again, metaphorically speaking, uh, but I like it. It's got a bit of a jazz-infused, uh, you know, element to it and uh, up-tempo. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Destination. I wasn't so conscious of my load When that road agenda shifted into a new reality I found myself connected with a, a higher authority She was the queen of the highway He was the king of the road Quintessential monster going where only angels go I was trapped within the moment Yet I was living eternity When I found myself connected with a, a higher authority now, So if you're cruising down your highway And if you're not thinking about the road It might be because you're caught up in destination You're not so conscious of your load and you're loading me just gently shift into a new reality Like me, you're gonna find yourself connected with a, a higher authority That song, I wrote that song, you know, on numerous occasions driving my car, you know So cruising down the highway and I wasn't thinking about the road And it just became the, the metaphor of, of driving uh, But the highway, of course, being, you know, our, our life and... and uh, all of a sudden sort of feeling transported uh, into another place. And uh, I wrote that song. Uh, this happens a lot of times with me, actually. I'll, I'll write the songs while I'm driving. I'll finish lyrics while I'm driving, but I often won't write them down. You know, I'll just, uh, I'll just yeah, I mean, I, I mean, these are all so canned and whatnot, but, but it's after the fact, you know, long after the fact, after I've played them. And so, yeah, so that one was, 
was, uh, yeah, just again, a metaphor. And Tim, Tim really likes that song. So uh, I did, I had these, uh, I had these um, CDs manufactured um, in the States uh, by a, a company called Oasis. And they, they do a compilation disc. And they ask you to, uh, to choose one song that you can put on a compilation that's sent out to radio stations. And that was the one that we, uh, that we chose to choose uh, to put on the, the compilation. It, not necessarily. It was the only one that fit the time constraints. <laughs> it was. Like, I think they had a constraint of like it had to be less than two minutes forty five seconds. I write long songs. I don't know. I guess they're all long, eh, John? But uh, certainly long by radio standards, I suppose. But uh, anyway, it fit. So, <laughs> what is the one song on this CD that you would say? Well, John, you're going to play one full song. What's it going to be? Yeah. Well, uh, it's a good question. Um, I think under oath, you know. I think maybe under oath. Uh, it's again, it's uh, it's sort of in a blues, a rootsy blues kind of genre, um, and it's about you know the essence of it is about this you know seeking and searching uh, for truth and the commitment to being truthful and stuff that I hold important. So musically, I suppose it's not the most interesting. I, I guess maybe, uh, you know, and Not Sure would be up there too. I think Not Sure is certainly uh, got the right energy and uh, the right sentiment, you know. Uh, watching the Light, I think too, you know. Uh, You're yeah. just going to go through every song. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> watching the Light My Daddy's eyes. Makes me stop to think about some things I despise, like knowing the anger, but never the pain. Fearing the light near him with our love in the rain, watching the light. His life makes me think about his giving in spite of the strife. I guess I shouldn't stop to think about what's happening. I guess I shouldn't stop to think about what's past. I guess I've got to realize love is something that for those who love will last. Watching the light in my children's eyes it makes me stop to think about the truth. Not the lies Like knowing that love is A gift that leaves all An essence that lingers This life is done I'm gonna stop to think about What's happening Gonna stop to think about what's past. I guess I've got to realize it. Love is something that for those who love will last. I have 
have to think about what's past. I've got to realize it. Love is something that for those who love me lasts. Watching the light reflected in my eyes, you know it makes me stop to think about the fool, not the wise. Knowing that love is the gift of this fool, giving's a promise, hope is a tune. Watching the light, of those who love on, to keep on living. In a song. Yes, I'm gonna stop to think about what's happening. I'm gonna stop to think about what's past. I'm gonna realize it, love you. Something that for those who love we like Watching the light Watching the light Won't you join with me now Watching the light What does the future hold for Joe Callahan? Yeah, well, I, I know I'm still, I'm working on guitar. I'm working on playing, right? So, uh, I, I mean, I think it was ever thus. Um, I, uh, I'll probably write some more. I've got another, you know, I've got another CD's worth of songs that I, I need to probably record at some point along the way. Uh, I have no plans to do that at this stage. Uh, we're still still adjusting. We're still unpacking, and you know, we we had a farm north of uh, the city too in Flinton that we sold last year, and we're still unpacking from that. So, but music uh, definitely features high on the list. I'm looking forward to hosting these uh, night kitchen uh, events and uh, playing a few songs there. I'm going to do a I'm going to do a gig over at the Acoustic Grill in Picton on f- in February. Uh, so yeah, and I'll probably do the odd festival around. So music is going to be high on the list. I'm still doing, you know, the freelance journalism stuff. So I'm uh, still fairly active with that. But I think music will be, you know, uh, of all those things, it'll probably still be maintain, you know, be my focus. I want to become a good guitar player. You know, I, I see myself as a singer who accompanies himself on a guitar. And I'm okay, you know. Uh, I might be too late. I don't know if the dexterity will happen, but... Uh, but uh, yeah, so definitely I'll be. But you know what? I, I, stardom and all that stuff is you know it's really about community music. There's there's a, a pretty thriving music community in Camelford that I that I'm hoping to get in touch with and uh, I've talked to a couple of people up there already. So and I'll probably do you know the odd festival here and there. So yeah, yeah. I don't want to again over overdo it. I I uh, yeah. But uh, I love jams. I love song circles and community music stuff. You've been listening to Intermission on 91X. Today's guest was folk singer Joe Callahan. Refreshments supplied by Mother's Pizzeria. Promotional and other considerations by the Patterson Agricultural Works and Iron Foundry. Glasgow Warehouse for staple and fancy dry goods. The Grand Trunk Railway. The Tambo at Sandbanks. And Crazy Kelly's. Intermission is brought to you Sundays at 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. by Pinnacle Music Studios, where music begins.